All right, check out this silky smooth header text animation on Alpha Tango Creative Studio's website. And then we can see that header text is also linked to scroll as we scroll up and down here. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build that middle out text header animation in GSAP with Webflow. Hey there, Web Bay. So we can see that big header text is right here with a class of heading. Now it's kind of spreading edge to edge here with just a little bit of padding. This padding here is set to five viewport widths on either side. So we could very easily just set this to zero if we want to be completely edge to edge. The heading size is 38 viewport widths as we can see right here. And I've applied an ID of heading to this element as well. Now the next section just has a little bit of text here and a class called spacer with a min height of 200 viewport heights just so that we have some room to scroll. Now inside of the head tag here, we're loading four scripts. The first script is the GSAP core library. The second script right here is the scroll trigger plugin for GSAP. The third script is the split type library by Luke PV. And the fourth script is the code sandbox file where I'm hosting this code. When I publish this clonable, I'll move the code into the before closing body tag so you can find it right here. Now, since the GSAP code won't run until our page loads, we wanna make sure that we don't have flash of unstyled content. And to do that, we can just open up some style tags. And then within that, we're going to drop a little CSS snippet what we're doing here is we're looking for an element with an ID of heading. That's what this pound sign is all about. And then we're setting the visibility to hidden. So this is not going to be visible when the page initially loads. Let's go ahead and save that. And we can publish this site. Okay, looking here in our code, the very first thing we're going to do is register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. Next, we wanna split the text into words and characters. In this case, we're just gonna use characters. So I'm gonna set a variable text and I'm gonna set it equal to a new instance of the split type class, and I'm going to supply that ID of heading that we specified in our Webflow project. Next, I'm gonna add a comma after our CSS selector and specify a JavaScript object with a property of types and a value of characters, or chars in this case. So what this is telling split type is to just split it into characters. We don't really care about lines and words. We just want the characters for this one. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set our initial state. And so we're gonna use gsap.set and we're gonna grab that ID of heading as well. And we're gonna set the auto alpha property to one. What this does is it prevents flash of unstyled content such that when an element with opacity greater than zero shows up, it sets the visibility back to visible. Remember in our style tag, how we set it to be invisible or hidden. That's what this is taking care of. Next, we use gsap.set again, and this time on each individual character, and we wanna set the Y% percent value to 100. So this is gonna force each individual character down 100% of its own height. If we head back into our Webflow project and we look at the heading, we can see there's actually a wrapper class called heading wrapper, and this has overflow set to hidden. So here we can see that our heading itself is encapsulated within that heading wrapper. Now, if we went and took the transform and took our move, of 100 and started scaling this up, we can see our text drop below that little window that we have created there with our heading wrapper. So what's gonna happen is that this is going to have an initial value of 100%, and then we're gonna translate that up to a value of 0%. However, it's gonna happen with each individual letter because of that split type library, and we're gonna stagger it with the power of GSAP. Back in our code, let's work on our page load animation. So we're gonna set a variable initial animation, and we're gonna call GSAP.2, which is a GSAP function that we have that takes two parameters. First, we're gonna pass it text.chars, which is, again, those characters created by split type, and then second will be our tween variables for GSAP, which we'll define inside this JavaScript object. Let's give our ourselves a little space and we'll set that y percent value to zero we'll set the ease to be something like sign dot out and we'll set the stagger here now stagger can take its own javascript object where we can specify how the stagger works here and we're going to say that we wanted to stagger from the center we want to set the amount property to 0.5 which means that the whole animation itself takes 0.5 seconds and so gsap will calculate how much each individual letter gets and then we'll set the ease to power one dot out for each individual stagger let's go ahead and save this and see how our initial animation looks all right, we've got our letters staggering in from the middle out. However, we can see that as we scroll, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and work on our scroll next. Now we don't want our initial animation and our scroll trigger to interfere with each other. So we're gonna make sure that the initial animation takes priority and we don't actually set our scroll trigger function until this animation is complete. GSAP provides us with this convenient on complete property, which we can pass a function that we want it to run when the first animation completes. So here I'm gonna define a function called activate scroll trigger that we'll get working on right below. So for our scroll animation, now we're going to define that function, activate scroll trigger. We're gonna call the two function that lives on the GSAP object again, and we're gonna pass it text characters or text.char. Now we need to pass the tween values again with a JavaScript object. When the user starts scrolling, we wanna send the letters to a Y% percent of negative 100 such that they move up in the browser viewport. Next, we'll define our stacker property, and this also gets a JavaScript object with a property of from 
and a value of center. So we're just staggering from the center in the same manner that we did in our initial animation. Next, we'll define our scroll trigger property, and this also gets a JavaScript object. We're gonna set the trigger to be an element with an ID of heading. We'll set the start to be when the top of that trigger element, so the heading, is at the top of the viewport. And we'll set the end to this fancy JavaScript function here. Now, what's going on here? Do not be scared. We are calling document.query selector on our heading element. So this is going to return us an HTML element. And then we're gonna get the offset height on that. And so we'll multiply the height of this element by 25%. And then we'll use this plus equal syntax that GSAP is expecting. So what this is all saying together is that when the user has scrolled 25% from the top of our element with the ID of heading, that is the end of our scroll trigger. This open close parentheses and fat error here means that we're defining a function to execute this. We'll also set our scroll trigger scrub value to one, which means it takes one second for scroll trigger to catch up with itself. This provides a nice little smoothing effect to our scroll. If you wanna see those start and end points, you can uncomment markers equals true, and that will show you where the start and end is. Now, something I forgot is that in order for our stagger effect to work, we need to supply the amount property, and we'll just give it a value of one here. So now we can save and then refresh and see how our animation works. All right, so our initial animation still works and I'm scrolling and those letters pop away starting from the middle up to the top there. And then if I refresh and while that initial animation is loading, I start scrolling, we can see that everything is still okay. We haven't broken this animation. What's going on? I'm done. Cut the show. I'm done. Take me off.